So you know what a database is, you know how to find the databases, but once you get here, uh, how do you go about picking one? Well, if you can't come in and talk to a librarian, um, I'm going to give you some tips in this video on how to narrow down your choices. And uh, perhaps the easiest way is just to, to, to take a breath and look at the subjects. Um, we put you into the databases looking at these subject listings because, frankly, they're a really good way to narrow down. If you have a human growth and development paper, you can look at the psychology uh, breakout. If you've got a, a science paper, you can go to science. If you're doing a history project in American or world history, a good place to start is the history um, breakout. So as a, as a basic way to narrow down, the subject list is a lot easier than the alphabetical list when you're getting started. So I've opened the history breakout. We'll pretend we have a history paper. And you still may be confused. We've got a multitude of databases in here and a lot of information on the screen for each one. Um, so the one thing to know is that each one of these links is an individually searchable research database. So every single link is a database. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a couple of things that are common to each link. So first off, America History and Life, Archival Films and Newsreels, Arts and Science, Encyclopedia of American Studies, historical abstracts with full text in the New York Times historical. Those are the names of the databases. That first part of each record, that's what the database is called. It's important to know what database you found an article in in case you lose it or the file gets corrupted and you want to go back and find it again. So that first part, that's how you know which database you actually searched. Um, right after that, the database title, you'll see uh, Publishers, EBSCO, uh, Films Media Group, JSTOR, Johns Hopkins University Press, EBSCO again, uh, and ProQuest. So these are the publishers. It's important to note those because sometimes you may like a publisher. You may like ProQuest or EBSCO, and so that's a good way to narrow down. You can, you can pick based on a publisher you like. And you'll notice as here with EBSCO, a lot of times um, these publishers appear multiple times in a database listing. So um, you know you got two EBSCO choices there. One last important thing to note um, on the physical record is the little blue eye. This eye appears on every single um, database link that we have in, in, our, um, in our index. And the blue eye is, is very important. It tells you all the information to know about the database. So if we click it for historical abstracts, you can at a glance see uh, its coverage, uh, how many journals it indexes, how far it goes back in time. Um, you know, and it is overall general holding. So that blue eye tells you a lot and is an easy way to narrow down your search. Um, some databases are big, some are small, but that's a good way to narrow. So the first part of the record is your database name followed by the publisher and then the little blue eye that tells you everything you need to know about what kind of content and what coverage the database has. And don't think, I mean, I showed you history just because it's, it's a good one to illustrate, but keep in mind that we're looking at science right now and once you get the hang of what you're looking at, it's exactly the same as history was. Um, we can go into, go into any one of these. Literature is going to be exactly the same as both history and science. Once you know how to read the records, it's very easy to figure out. So one category I want to point out in particular to you amongst others is the general category. Um, the general category is a good one to keep in mind. These databases often get overlooked because they're not they don't say history or psychology or literature, but the general database just means they do a little bit of everything. They're not just history or psychology or math. Um, they're all all things. Um, you know, these are some of our best databases and, and good ones to remember. Um, and a good one, particularly, just to point out while we're in here, is Academic Search Complete, this first one. So if you click the eye for it, you can see it's it's absolutely astonishingly huge. 5,300 full-text periodicals going all the way back to 1865. So Academic Search is kind of like your Desert Island database. If you're only going to remember one, um, try there because it's, it's absolutely massive. It's usually really easy to find stuff. Um, it's one of our best databases. So um, another good category to note is reference. And while we're down here, I'll just show you real quick. Notice that um, Credo Reference, for instance, is up here under General, and it's also under Reference. Um, that's not a different database. It's just we link to it in both places because it's a really good database. But um, the reference databases are good to remember, too. They present basic facts. If you're looking for basic info on World War II, um, the Holocaust, something like that, you just want to know dates, facts, figures, um, the reference databases are encyclopedia-style information. They're good for that. Um, we have a link down here to our streaming video databases. So we have three nursing um, films collections, and then we here have Films on Demand, which is our, our big... Uh, collection. If you click Films on Demand, you can browse all of our electronic films that are viewable from home, um, either by their collection, 
so you can look if you're looking for history videos or health videos you can also um, search them just by publishers so if you like content from the history channel or not geographic um, you can do that too and again you can look at all those videos from home um, down there under the streaming video category um, notice too up at the top uh, we're sorted by subject but you can click alphabetical so once you know where you're going um, you can scroll down this list and jump right to it. It's, it's easy in the beginning to, to go by subject, but if you use academic search all the time or you always use films on demand and you just want to get there quickly, um, you're welcome to click the alphabetical list once you know where you're going because it's easy to find. The two we mentioned today are right here, academic search complete. Um, and then as we scroll down a little bit, like there's American History and Life from the history section. Uh, so they're easy to find this way. Um, it's just when you're getting used to database searching, it's it's a lot easier to do it by subject. So remember, a good way to narrow down is by searching by subject, um, deciding on a publisher you like, um, or asking your librarian. Never be afraid to give us a call, email, or come in person to ask our advice.